Can I be honest? I hate sculptures. I don't really get them. Show me a painting and I can kind of get the idea. Show me this and I'm not interested. I don't even like the notes that go next to sculptures. These notes are not written to help people understand or appreciate the art. The museum notes are written to make the writer feel intellectually superior to the reader. I don't like that kind of writing. I want to do something different today. Today, we're looking at three artists who changed my mind about modern sculpture. We're figuring out why these people make art, we're seeing if we can learn something new, but mostly, we're looking at some cool contemporary clay. Can you describe the sound of wind passing through a tall field? How could you describe the sweet scent of an autumn breeze through the trees? Can you? I can't. Hosono Hitomi can. She doesn't use poems or essays. Hosono makes clay come to life, almost literally. Her ceramic pieces use the natural shapes of foliage to create intricate webs of art. Hosono starts every piece from scratch. She begins her process by feeling plants between her fingers to gain physical experiences that she can map to the lathe. But just feeling isn't enough. She then studies the botanical forms of every plant by reading and drawing out the shapes of every individual species. It takes Hosono several weeks to map out every vein, every edge, every fold, and every branch of each leaf. Much like actual trees, Hosono's sculptures incorporate familiar patterns and completely new arrangements every single time she works. Her process of carving, layering, and stitching together ceramic sprigs takes over a year and a half per sculpture. Hosono explains her art with the term Seishin ga yadoru. Her ceramics make us feel the presence of nature because she invites it into her art. Hosono makes art to express appreciation for the beauty of plants. Her work is meditative, repetitive, and time intensive. The result is subtle, elegant, and one of a kind. Hey, you realize no one actually uses these things, right? No one uses a museum quality ceramic bowl as a fruit basket. So what's the point of making bowls to be looked at? Tanaka Yu realized that no one uses modern ceramics. Her career has been a discussion of that unspoken truth. Every Tanaka piece asks the same question. When we make art, where does the form end and the function begin? Furushiki is the kind of Japanese wrapping cloth used to pick up an expensive vase or pack a bento box for school. Tanaka molds the outlines of traditional ceramic shapes such as bowls and boxes, then uses ceramic furushiki shells to cover them up. Much like Hosono, Tanaka makes pieces that are similar, but always original and distinct. She describes her style as versatile, meaning that she's able to use it to cover a wide variety of shapes and material images. Unlike Hosono, Tanaka does not use physical models or study to base her works. Every piece starts out as a mental image of a tsutsumimono. The imagined forms are turned into trompe l'oeil using scaffolds, sponges, and an intense drying process that Tanaka developed to allow her to layer bright pigments over many trips to the kiln. Tanaka plays with the tension between form and function. She reminds us that useful objects can be beautiful and that beautiful objects go unused. Her works are simple, painstaking, and vivid. But what if we let go of function entirely? Let's not even entertain the idea of making ceramics as decorative tableware. Kono Tomoko makes art that can't be used and probably isn't decorating any countertops. Kono Tomoko makes things that aren't supposed to exist. Kono makes abstract art because she wasn't good at making traditional pottery. Kono struggled to make traditionally beautiful objects, so she decided to make something new instead. Her art isn't clear, it isn't obvious, and it definitely is not useful. Kono makes art as a method of exploring her thoughts and feelings. Cliché, I know. But really ask yourself, how good are you at expressing yourself? Kono is far better than most people at attempting to turn inner feelings into physical objects. She makes these weird looking things that have an immediate emotional impact, especially in a physical space. But how does Kono come up with these things? It's raw expression. She doesn't use a model. She doesn't have a design philosophy. Kono made up her style based on her inner thoughts and feelings. She doesn't start out with a specific idea or animal to manifest. She just starts from scratch every single time and lets the object take shape on its own. It isn't easy to understand. Her art is flat out weird, but I find it compelling on an emotional and intellectual level. The precise details and otherworldly quality to the overall shape give a strong impression of her attention 
complexity, and true originality. It's complicated, but what could be more complicated than the inner workings of the human spirit? Art explores ideas that are too complex to express in words alone. If we could fully articulate our thoughts and feelings with written words and scientific reasoning, visual art would have no reason to exist. But ceramics do exist. They exist to tell us stories that we can't quite explain. So rather than try to cover every detail about these pieces, I wanted us to get a general feel for why these sculptures were made and what they make us think about. Sculptors make more than statues. They make us ask questions. They make us ask what people are capable of dreaming up. Potters are more creative and interesting than I thought. Potters are more capable than I thought. So next time you're in an art museum, maybe spend a little bit more time in the 3D section. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.